Welcome to another edition of Begley's Mailbag on SNY.TV, where we answer your questions on the Knicks and the NBA. Our first question is from Fucci Maine, my buddy, Max Fucci. We miss you here in New York, pal. You are asking me, how long is Tom Thibodeau's leash at this point? We're recording this Monday morning after Sunday's debacle at the Garden where the Knicks got crushed by the Thunder. So I think his leash is shortening. I, I think that, let's say, the Knicks struggle on this upcoming five-game West Coast road trip and like they, they could lose games and be competitive and, and he might be okay. But I think if they lose games and they get destroyed or embarrassed defensively, particularly in a way that they have, you know, against Atlanta this year, against Boston, against Brooklyn, and then on Sunday against Oklahoma City, I do think his, his leash will just continue to get shorter, given everything that's happened to this point under the Leon Rose era um, and with Tom Thibodeau. So I, I do think that the leash just gets shorter. As far as replacements, I would assume that they would go the interim route, Johnny Bryant, and then see what's out there in terms of Emilia Doka, Quinn Snyder, uh, just see who might be available because, you know, Johnny Bryant would be a first time head coach. And I know that he has very, very uh, valuable relationships with a lot of the players. But this team, if they fire Tom Thibodeau based on where they are in this timeline and the Leon Rose era, I think they'd be looking to win now. So do you see Johnny Bryan as the coach that's going to get you there to get you in the playoffs and advance in the playoffs? Or do you go out and look for an Adoka who has been suspended by the Celtics but led them to the finals last season or Quinn Snyder who's had great success in Utah? So I would assume that Bryant would be the, the guy, the interim, and then maybe they, they, they sniff around. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. If the Knicks play well on this West Coast trip, um, I think Tom Thibodeau is fine, and the Knicks just continue from there uh, on this season. Next, we got one from Busy from YouTube, and Busy says, Can you in the press corps please ask Tibbs about his merit-based system and what Julius Randle's done to deserve to close a game and closing it over Obi Toppin? This is a, a very fair question. Uh, I think it's, uh, it should be asked of Tom Thibodeau, and I think that if Thibodeau was asked this specific question, I would think that he'd say something along the lines of, you know, the flow of the game. Uh, I wanted Julius out there with the rest of the four guys. It's not about one guy, but it was about the unit. But I think if he maybe is, is being more honest, he might say, to, uh, Obi Toppin, uh, I'm not I'm not ready to have him out there late in close games uh, based on his defense. And so I think that both things maybe you agree with, disagree with, and, and maybe it's actually changed now with Toppin and his defense at this point in the season. But I think coming into the season, that's what Tom Thibodeau would have said, you know, but certainly a uh, bigger picture, Julius Randle, Tom Thibodeau. I think that after Kimball Walker was benched last season, I think that the way that Julius Randle was coached in the wake of that and leading up to that, you know, players in the locker room saw a, a different standard for a player like Kimball Walker and a different standard for a player like Julius Randle. And they questioned that. That's something that stuck with some of those guys last season and they just wondered why there was different standards applied. So, you know, th those things matter in an NBA locker room too. So it's a, it's a good question. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if the minutes change at all on this upcoming West Coast trip. Next, we've got one from KNYT Hoops. And KNYT Hoops wants to know, uh, I've heard Emmanuel quickly is receiving trade interest from multiple teams. What do you think, either based on sources or your own opinion, is IQ's trade value? Um, I'm glad you heard that because we reported that, uh, I think it was over the weekend. So appreciate you reading. I hope you read it on our site and not an aggregator, but thank you for, uh, for referencing that. I think that with Emmanuel quickly, I would assume first round pick would be where he is, like maybe, I don't know, late first, mid first. I would assume that the Knicks would be wanting at least that in return for Emmanuel quickly. I think, uh, you know, the calls coming in, I think the Knicks are, are not shutting the phone down on those calls. And, you know, I think they're they're open to dialogue on it. Um, I don't know kind of where everything stands right now at the moment, um, but they did. There were conversations had with other teams in the Knicks about Emmanuel quickly. And, you know, quickly, he is uh, he's a player who I think the Knicks value. But at the same time, they have financial decisions to make. So it's interesting when you look at the big picture. Obi Top and Emmanuel quickly both extension eligible this summer. Knicks already have money tied to Julius Randle and RJ Barrett. 
uh, and other players, Jalen Brunson, some long-term deals. So they might have to make a decision there financially. Uh, so that just comes into play on quickly. But I, I don't know how anything, if anything, will get very close until we get closer to the trade deadline. We've got one from YouTube from Jeremy Tyler Lescaye. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Jeremy. Jeremy says, uh, any stars the Knicks have their eyes on as of right now, based on what happened with the Donovan Mitchell trade situation, we know that the Knicks are not willing to give up RJ Barrett, Quentin Grimes, one or two other young players, and several unprotected first round picks. So we know that. Uh, do they change their thinking though, if, if another player becomes available? It's possible. I mean, I think, by passing on Donovan Mitchell, it puts more onus on Leon Rose in the front office to be more aggressive when the next star player becomes disgruntled and asks for a trade. And obviously the whole league has its eyes on Shea Gilgis Alexander, a player who just torched the Knicks at the Garden on Sunday. Uh, with Gilgis Alexander, if he is gonna ask for a trade and, and go through all the headache of asking for a trade, I wonder like, would he consider a team like the Knicks? Because if you're the Knicks, you have to give up so much in a trade for Shea Gildas Alexander. Maybe he looks at it and says, what's left here even after I come here? Other names, uh, Carl Towns is always going to be a name, particularly Minnesota, Rudy Gobert now, and, and they're trying to figure things out, Anthony Edwards, and he's signed to a long-term deal. So, um, you know, he could be moved at some point, I believe in the offseason. And you're also, you're always going to keep an eye on Phoenix with Devin Booker just because of the ties, the Leon Rose, and also Joel Embiid, Philadelphia. Same thing, ties with Leon Rose, high stakes in Philadelphia. It's got to work for them this season. So I think just teams around the league are generally looking at those guys, and, and I think the Knicks are as well. We've got one from Dylan Burns, 95. Dylan, thanks for checking in, man. Dylan says, how does the front office view the current roster? I think the Knicks expected to be competitive this season to get into the play-in tournament and then at least get into the play-in tournament and see where things go. Uh, but more importantly, you know, the expectations of owner James Dolan are, are what matters here. My expectations, even, you know, Leon Rose's expectations uh, don't matter as much as Jim Dolan's. And so what did he expect? I think at this point he expected, just my guess, results. He wanted to see a team that you, you could see is improving. You could see has players on the rise and you can see a forward positive trajectory when you watch them night in and night out. So I think generally that's that's what the expectation was for this group coming into the season. The Knicks have always said that they're gonna be flexible with stockpiling their picks and being aggressive via trade to improve the roster. So even after the Donovan Mitchell trade talks, that's still gonna continue. But this team in my eyes needs to win in order for the current group to continue to move forward and have a chance to build, up, build out the roster. That'll do it for us. Thanks for the questions, everybody. Please keep them coming in. I'll look to answer a few of them in a written article on sny.tv later this week, and we'll see everybody soon.